In this lesson, we'll be creating a closed 2D pocket clearing operation. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use 2D Adaptive to rough a closed pocket, use 2D Adaptive for rest machining, and create a 2D contour finishing toolpath. For this next lesson, we're going to start with a supplied file, 2D Pocket Ready to Program. This is the same 2D Pocket model that we took a look at, However, this one has the vise and the stock created and the cam set up. You should have already uploaded or imported your tool library in the previous lessons. So we're going to go ahead and use that same tool library for this file. To get started, I want to expand models and I want to hide the stock body as well as the vise as we really don't need to see them while we're programming. So again, make sure that you expand these and make sure that you're hiding the stock and the vise body. Then I'm going to use the home button to make sure that I fit the screen in my home orientation. To get started, we're going to create a 2D adaptive clearing toolpath. The adaptive motion allows the tool to adjust its motion and speed so that way when it's engaging more material, it can keep a consistent load on the tool. This helps speed up the actual removal of material, lets us use more of the cutting flute of the tool, as well as reduces tool wear. We're going to select the tool to use. And again, we're going to be using our cloud library or your local library if you used it. We're going to start with tool number eight, a quarter inch flat long. We're going to leave all the feeds and speeds that were programmed inside of our tool library because these should be ideal and default for the, any tool that you create in your library. You can change the parameters on the fly if you need to, but that's going to be important that you find out the feeds and speeds from calculations, from your tool manufacturer, and from some real testing. In the geometry section, we're going to start by selecting the face inside of our 2D pocket. Selecting the face is important because it automatically grabs the island or that small boss in the center. Next, note that we have several options in here, but for this first example, we're not going to be using any of these. For the heights, I'm going to leave all these defaults, but let's go over them real quick so we understand what each is. The clearance height is going to be the topmost height and where the tool starts and ends before and after the operation. The retract height is going to be the distance at which it can wrap it to. The top height is going to be the top of the stock. And the bottom height is, in this case, our selected contour. Notice that these parameters are populating with metric values. The units is set to millimeters, so we will have to change that. But if we do that during the creation of a toolpath, it's going to automatically end the toolpath. So we'll do that after we OK and create it. For passes, we have stock to leave, which is currently set to 0.5 millimeters. We have regular passes and information here, which we're going to leave all these as default. We don't need to do multiple depths. We can cut this geometry in one pass. And we're going to leave smoothing turned off, but we will turn feed optimization on. This allows us to determine what a maximum directional change will be for the tool and how it's going to adjust the feed radius, the distance, and the feed rate. I also have this set to only internal corners or inner corners, but in this case, it's not going to make much of a difference based on our geometry. Lastly, for linking parameters, we're going to leave all the default settings and say OK. Let's go ahead and change the units to inch. And let's edit this toolpath. Let's go into passes and note that the stock to leave values and all the other values have been converted. But since they were created as metric values, they've been rounded. So we want to make sure that we make some adjustments here. The radial stock to leave will be 0.02. However, the axial stock to leave is going to be set to zero. I want to cut all the material down to the floor. Let's do a quick simulation of this. In simulate, we want to make sure that we turn on stock and play through this. We're going to be doing a helical entry and then working our way around the pocket. So you'll notice that as we look at this, we have a few different color lines on the screen for where the tool is cutting. The red movement is going to be the helical entry movement. Anything shown in yellow will be rapid. The green are going to be lead in and lead out values and the blue will be our feed or cutting. So you can see the way that this adaptive toolpath works is that it's actually cutting in these small circular motions. And then as it gets to the end of cutting, it leads out and does a small rapid movement to get back into cutting the next section. Because of this type of cutting and type of movement, 
it really speeds up the removal of material, especially when we're roughing large areas. We're not done with this pocket, so we need to go ahead and copy or duplicate this operation. So we're going to use the duplicate option. Then we're going to edit that second operation. We need to use a smaller tool. So going back to our library, we're going to grab tool number seven, the 3 16 Under geometry, we're now going to use rest machining. Now keep in mind that the tool diameter was 0.25. However, we need to account for the material we left on the wall. So because we left material on the wall, I'm going to increase this by 0.04. So I have this tool diameter of 0.25 and I'm going to say plus 0.04 and notice that that value is okay. If I go into the corner radius, remember that again, this was 0.125, but we need to increase this value because we left stock on the wall. The reason I'm using 0.04 is because in these smaller areas, we left 0.02 on each side and we need to account for that. As we go through here for some of the other options, all the parameters are still going to be the same with the exception of turning off stock to leave. And we also want to take a look at linking parameters. We're going to want to increase our leads and transitions because we want to make it come in a little bit farther. So what we want to do is increase this horizontal lead and lead out value. And I'm going to set this to 0.05 and then we're going to say, okay. So as it calculates this toolpath, you can now see that we have this adaptive movement moving into these small areas. And if we select setup one and we take a look at each of these toolpaths, what we should see is an overlap between them. Let's do a quick simulation to make sure that we haven't left any material behind. I'm going to use the go to next operation, and then I'm going to play through the next set. I'm going to speed this up a little bit and rotate it around. And notice that because we left a small amount of stock on the walls from the original operation, we still need to go back in and do some sort of contour around the entire thing. So everything looks good here in terms of going in and removing material, but I'm going to edit the adaptive. I'm going to go back to passes and I'm going to leave stock on the wall of 0.02, but no axial stock and say, okay, and allow it to recalculate that. Notice that when I do this, it doesn't go all the way into that area, so it is producing a problem. And we will need to turn off stock to leave, but we'll need to come back and do a 2D contour to clear that out. So we'll simply come back into 2D contour. We're going to use the same tool, 3 16 so we don't invoke a tool change. And for geometry, I'm going to simply select this outside section, as well as this inside boss, keeping in mind the location of the red arrow is going to be important. Under passes, we're not going to be leaving any stock. We won't be doing multiple depths. We're going to leave all the default settings, but we will repeat that finish pass. We're going to allow it to do a secondary finish pass just to make sure it cleans everything up. We're not going to worry about any ramping. We're going to leave all these default settings. We're going to say OK and just see what the toolpath looks like. So you can see that it enters and exits at the same point. Everything looks pretty good there. So I want to select all of setup one and do one last simulation. I'm going to jump past the first adaptive clearing, jump past the second, and now I'm going to play through the contour. So you can see there it's removing material around the outside of that, and it's doing that pass twice. It's going to come into this small section of these pockets, clear those out, and again it'll repeat that finish pass going all the way around it one more time. And then it'll end and come back up. So now everything in here looks pretty good. Repeating the finish pass probably isn't necessary for this geometry, but again, it's good to understand these options. And sometimes we might want to come back and repeat that pass if we have a thin wall, or maybe we want to make sure that we have a nice smooth finish. From here, I'm going to go back to a home view and I want to save my file before moving on to the next step. 